Hey guys, Ty with Cincy Diesel Repair. So I got a treat today. I got an OBS uh, F-250 back here that we're gonna be working on. But I'm gonna also show you some of the other stuff I got going on, which is a lot. It's a mess around here. But let's go over it uh, and I'll show you. I'll show you just how good a shape this truck's in. First of all, let's go over some of the other things going on around here, just because. So this not a not a diesel, but I'm in the middle of it too. Got the old 5.3 Vortec LS. Had a uh, displacement on demand lifter fail, so it got the DoD delete. It's going back together. Did that yesterday. Um, of course, I still got these daggone F-150s I bought that need cam phasers. Haven't got around to that. The old Cat 955. Been sitting all winter. And the batteries have gone dead. And these big D8 batteries aren't cheap. So I'm trying to get those charged up. Once it fires up, it'll run. But I need it because we had some strong winds the other night. And... Uh, it knocked down that tree that accessed back to my back part of the property. Let's see if we can get this old thing fired up today. It uh, it needs some service too. We just got a mess around here. But let's go back up here and look at this 97. So this will be coming out in a later video. That's a 05 six liter crank no start. This is a 97 F250. And I'm going to show you guys the truck, and then I'll show you how many miles are on this thing. Now, I do believe they did the front end swap on it. It's got the the Dana, big Dana front end, and the leaf spring suspension instead of the coil springs. This sucker sits up. I mean, there's my dually. But that's how the 350 sat, the 350 single wheels. It's got the, I love those wheels. I've had two of these trucks in the past. This thing, that's original paint on this truck. I mean, I'm pretty sure this came out of Ohio. It's a friend of ours that owns this truck. Um, Nine, what is he, 18 years old, I guess. Just get ready to graduate high school this year. Found this thing. It's got one ding right here. Other than that, I believe the rest of the truck is pretty much, oop, that doesn't matter. Can't do much from the license plate. Got a little bigger exhaust tip on it, uh, straight piped, tinted windows. The, I mean, this truck is just straight as an arrow. The hood's paint is in beautiful shape. The grill, the bumper, I mean, people would kill for this truck. Show you the inside. Absolutely immaculate interior. Power windows, locks, pretty much everything. He does have an edge tuner on it. But pretty much everything you could get in these trucks back then. Look at that, even the electronic lumbar support. So, yeah, let's look under the hood here. this thing it's just I have to bear with the camera for a minute I can't this is when hoods were hoods I gotta oh boy hold on okay here we go so look at this original battery terminals no corrosion it's got an aftermarket air cleaner and I, you know not so much aftermarket all that stock it's just a bigger but I mean just everything about this motor and it is the original engine. There's the tag right there. I mean, this thing is just totally unmolested. Now the hard part's getting up on these old things. Oh God, okay. I mean, this thing is just in perfect shape. Got a new water pump. 
thermostat. Looks like the vacuum pump's been replaced recently. Um, the reason it's here today is it's got a bad fuel leak and um, I already diagnosed it. It's coming from the fuel pump. On these old body styles, the fuel pump sits. It's a mechanically driven fuel pump. There we go. I'm trying to do this with my arms stretched out. So that's the fuel pump down in the valley. So we gotta take off a few things here, move some stuff around. But that fuel pump's leaking. Um, when they went to the, there was technically no 98 trucks, but when they went to the new body style 99 power strokes that were intercooled, um, they went to an electronic fuel pump. But these old ones, uh, they're driven off the cam lobe. That's why they kind of idle funny. They kind of got that distinctive idle, but I mean, this thing's just immaculate. So, now that you've guessed how many miles are on this thing, let's show you. Ugh. 349,000 miles. That's no joke. I mean, does he have a tent on the glass too? I guess he's got the windshield tinted. I like that. Just goes to show, oh, the classic doors on these things. The pins were out. Yeah, could use some hens, some hens, some pins. Hinges are, I don't know if I can get it to pick up. God dang, he's freaking, it's no wonder the hinges wear out. It's not gonna show on camera, but it's got play in the door. They all, these old ones all do that, but it's not horrible. Yeah, I mean, it's just straight as an arrow. 300,000 mile truck. Like I said, original paint. You can tell any of you guys out there that know paint. No, you, it's not hard to see when it's been repainted. This truck is not, when was it built? Let's see. 10 of 97, so this was one of the last ones. Dang, I love this truck. Anyway, long enough intro here. Um, so let me get a few things off here. I'll show you uh, what we're gonna replace in this, in this pump. Um, Bill Hewitt, PowerStrokeHelp.com. He's got a real good video on these. Um, I might miss some of it because I got a million things going on, but I will try to show most of it. Let me get going. Step one, easy enough. You got this. Basically is your, I can't get it back on there. You guys get the idea. This sits right here. It's got this clamp on it, eight millimeter. Take that clamp loose. This clamp, this clamp this is basically your boost. Where all your boost goes into, old school. No intercooler. Take that off. When you take it off, look at this gasket. You guys might want to just order one if you're doing this. I'm trying to hold the phone, but I'm putting all my weight on this shoulder. Um, here, let me sit this down. Someday I'll get a GoPro and some other stuff. Um, that gasket can get pinched and get worn, and you'll actually lose boost pressure coming out of the turbo. So uh, this one, of course, is in perfect shape. Um, this you'll probably won't find on most of these trucks. They're probably long gone, but this was a little heat shield. We're gonna just pops off. And so I can tell by looking, somebody's done this before. I believe. I believe so. Could be wrong. But, um, yeah, dang it. You know what? I thought these hoses were in better shape, but I can see dry rock cracks. So, um, just something that slipped my mind, honestly. I meant to buy a whole kit or some hose and cut it up. So we're gonna have to do that, but now you can kind of see where this guy sits down in here. You got a hose down here at the bottom. You got this big nut on the back, and that's your 
fuel lines going over to your head on either side. I'll show you how to get that sucker loose here in a few minutes. Then two mounting flange bolts, one there and one there. I don't know what's unplugged right there. We'll find out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it can be more intimidating than it is, honestly. I, I have done these without removing the filter housing. Uh, the hardest thing about that is getting this hose on and off and the lower hose on and off. But you know what? We got time. Not really. Not really at all. Let me see. Let me, let's see if we can get it out without taking these off. I mean, we're going to take them off and change them anyhow, but let's just see. Maybe you guys are in a situation where you don't need to change it, but I don't, you can probably see, maybe. I'm trying to show you all the diesel fuel down in there. Um, but it's, I'll show you, it's coming out of the weep hole, kind of like a water pump. There you can see all of it sitting in the valley. It's just running out the back of this truck, all down the back of it. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Um, well, here, I can do it right now. So you're gonna need a big wrench. Inch, inch and a quarter. That guy is going down here. There's this big old nut on the back here. Got it. Make sure you get it on there good. <clears throat> it'll it'll pop loose. So, and then you got to try to get your wrench off, which is normally not that hard. But today, there it goes. Thanks for your assistance. So I'll do this off camera, but so I'm just gonna take that. Oh, hi. I, I don't know who that is. Um, God, they got me all confused now. Hold on, I'll get a light. Okay, there we go. So there's that big nut, gotta get off. And now you can really see all the diesel fuel in there. So I got it broke loose with the closed in. Just kind of got to work it loose. A little half turn at a time or whatever. So I'm going to do that. Uh, then I'm going to try taking this clamp and this clamp loose. And then that clamp down there. Take that guy loose. And then I'm going to take these 10 millimeter mounting bolts out. And I'm going to see if I can't wiggle this thing back a little bit without having to take these hoses off. Just, just to give you guys that option. So let me get all that loose and we'll see what happens. Okay, never mind. Abandoned the plan of trying to get this out without this. <clears throat> I remember now why I don't do that. It's, it's more difficult than just taking this out. Um, it's been on, I'm just now realizing it's been a long time since I've worked on one of these older ones so to get this guy out drain your fuel um, well, let me get the light here obviously take your clamps loose I got them both off at the pump that guy I got a wire in the way loosen the guy down there at the bottom you can see him down there in the puddle of diesel fuel guy down there at the bottom loosen the one that goes on the pump over here loosen these two and push them down off this spout pull this connector off the sensor uh, you got two lines here 9 16 that sit right there like that just take those loose tuck them out of the way uh, you got a clamp down there 
There it is, way down there, that connects to your fuel drain. You may not have that on your truck. A lot of guys just don't mess with it. Um, this plug is on the side of the pump on this little tang. Once again, your truck, it may just be hanging because these are old trucks and people don't mess with them anymore. Then you just got a bolt there and a bolt uh, there. And we're gonna wiggle this out if I'm remembering everything. But guys, I bet it's been I bet it's been at least five years since I've worked on one of these, other than the old ambulance, but that's a whole different ball game. Alright, let me get it out of here. Okay, everything's out. Um there where the pump came out. If I can get it. You can see the camshaft right there where it rides. And one thing to note is Make sure when you go to pull this pump out, if there's any diesel fuel sitting like there was here in this valley, make sure you stick a rag there because you don't want it to go down in there because it's going straight to your crankcase. And then also, once you get it out, go ahead and plug that. Maybe. I'm gonna plug that where the pump goes because you don't want anything falling down on top of your cam. And another advantage of taking all this out is, I mean, look at all the junk in that valley from over the years. So we're gonna clean all that out. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's just, it's worth it. It's worth it. Um, what else? Oh, one thing I forgot. Well, I'll go show you here in a minute. But that's your IPR valve right there. The harness that's on the uh, fuel pump housing or fuel filter housing. You got to pop this little clip off when you get to remove it. But everything's kind of unbolt and just wiggle it out. Um, here's the pump. This one was coming out of this weep hole right here. Every time it would plunge, it was squirting out of that weep hole. Um, sometimes this, this sits in the block. This will break off, get stuck in there. Um, Bill Hewitt has a video on his, the one he was doing did that. Oh, well, look, you can see it. So, um, then you just got to make sure this doesn't fall when you pull the pump out just go slow just make sure this stays sitting on the cam lid. you don't want it to fall down in there I don't know if it will uh, second thing this is the big nut the big banjo bolt that goes on the back of the pump there that I was showing you and it's got two shims I always buy new ones some guys reuse them um, they're not much I mean I don't see it's got a bit of a ridge in it you can see the ridge where it's been crushed. I just go ahead and buy new ones. So, I need to get in all these grip mats. I got, I love these things. I got like seven projects on one though. Okay, let me walk back up here to the housing. Someday I'll get around to fixing this house. Bulldoze, isn't it? Uh, let's see. So the pump's sitting in there, the housing's sitting there like this. And you got two sensors there that just stay. Let's see if I can get this thing to sit up. Oh, almost. But anyway, right there, that goes down to your IPR valve. You gotta flip this little this little guy here back and just pull that out. Then the whole housing comes out. So now I'm gonna go try to find hose. I don't think I have any. We're gonna replace all these hoses. Everything's going new. And then I got the new pump. We'll put that in too. Okay, so I ran up the auto store. Got some hose. Uh, you can order a kit from Ford with all these in it. Um, they're not real expensive. But if you want to just make your own. I use... <clears throat> got to make sure it's first of all a uh, fuel injection hose. Because these pumps will push... Um, I mean, I've seen them push up 70 psi but you need fuel injection hose now this stuff's rated like 200 and something psi that's way more than you need but 
it works because what you have to have is it has to be compatible with diesel fuel or it'll turn to just mush so I use the Gates barricade fuel injection hose 3 8 and the barricade is um, multi-fuel and bio fuel compatible so it will not mess up and if you don't have gates this number here the SAE number uh, 30R 14T2 that number also that will be printed on a hose will tell you what it is uh, compatible with I used to know exactly how to decode that I don't remember now but anyway this stuff it's not cheap it's like $7.99 a foot and you probably don't need one foot I got two but I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of them uh, to, to fit replace them all Another thing is, when you get this from the store, a lot of times it's curled up. This one's still got some curl to it. And sometimes it'll be flattened down from being on a spool a long time. Take it in, turn your oven on for a minute, stick it in the oven. Doesn't even take two minutes. It'll flatten out and kind of work it back into place. So let me get all this together and put it... Uh, I'll just go ahead and put everything back together. Everything's just reverse of taking it apart and see what it does. So it's all back together. I just took it for a test drive. Runs good. Valley's nice and dry. We got all our new hoses on there. Everything's back the way it should be. Um, honestly, this truck's probably going to need a set of injectors at some point. It's got a rough idle. Not the end of the world, but if he wants it to run as good as it looks, which it looks sharp, um, probably probably time for a set of injectors um, when you put this back together after you get it all back together go ahead and take your fuel filter out and fill your fuel bowl up with some diesel uh, only about only fill it about that much from the bottom because when you put that filter in it's gonna expand and if you put too much it's just gonna overflow everywhere so let's start it up you can hear what a I don't know if I started in the beginning of this video or not. Probably not. You hear what it sounds like. Now this also had a bad lope. Every time it would first start it, after it sat for a minute, it would lope real bad for a second. Then it would go away. Well, there it is. So we haven't fixed the lope. I'll have to figure that one out. But... Just to give you guys an idea, there's no tuning on this truck. It is straight piped. But I mean, there's no smoke. I've never checked the blow by. It's got some. But. got some but it's uh I mean it's 300,000 miles I'm not sure why it looped like that unless let's see what happens let's do it again here yeah there we go I might not have all the air out of it or I don't know but it runs, uh, it just runs a little rough at idle. I'd have to do a compression test and see if we got, I'm sure the compression numbers aren't gonna be perfect on it, but we'll let it sit and make sure it doesn't keep loping. If it does, we'll figure out what it is. All right guys, so the main point of this video really for me was uh, the condition of this truck. I mean, there's a million videos out there on changing those pumps, and it's pretty straightforward. But, man, 350,000 miles, basically, and this truck is just, it's immaculate. I mean, this 6-liter over here with 190,000, it, it doesn't, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so, of course, it's going to need some work. Like I said, the kid's 18. 
I guess, getting ready to graduate high school. I know that much. And, uh, you know, he's a friend of the family, so this is doing this for next to nothing, really. Just, uh, just trying to help him because, I mean, it's a cool truck. It's cool that he wants one like this. You know, he, for, I don't know what he spent on the truck, but I'd be willing to bet for the money he spent on this truck, he probably could have bought a six liter or a, uh, you know, newer Dodge, you know, newer than, uh, maybe not newer than 97, I don't know, but it was cool that a kid nowadays wants a truck like this, so, anyway, um, you'll see the video on the 05 six liter coming out, um, the track loader, it's it's not going to start today. I'm going to be spending a few hundred dollars on batteries. You know what I mean? Well, actually, about $400 on batteries. And that hurts. So, anyway, guys, comment, like, subscribe. Tell me what you think of this truck. It's slick, man. As always, I appreciate it. See you.